pals I'm here today to do a library haul and I thought I'd have a little bit of a chat first because I had a slightly different experience to what I usually do in the library and also I thought I'd do sort of like a TBR update so as you may know if you've been watching the channel for any length of time I have been trying to get my TBR sort of set down to zero so I wanted to get rid of all the pre current year books I had so I didn't want any books to sit around on my shelves for longer than a few months unread and then my aim was to have around 30 books in the house that I hadn't read yet and I wanted that to include library books so I was thinking I was comfortable with owning about 15 books that I hadn't read and then sort of having another 15 from the library because I felt like that gave me a nice um, range of choice and I now am down to 10 of my own books so if I didn't read any library books this month I could probably get through those 10 and, and be at TBR zero but the other day when I was having a look at those books I realised I only had like three or four literary fiction books left and what I was really craving was a British based literary fiction book that was either sort of rural or working class focused and I didn't have any of those in the uh, you know TBR of 10 and I also had a look back through the books I'd read this year and realised I'd only read like a couple of British based books and so yeah that's definitely something I've been um, missing from my reading diet so far this year so because of that I decided to go in the library and actually browse which isn't something I usually do and the reason I don't usually do that is because a lot of the books I borrow from the library tend to be newer releases and so in order to actually get hold of them I have to request them because there's just a really long queue of people who want them so I tend to request so many books at the library that like I can just keep up with the requests or historically I could only just keep up with the requests and not really browse other books but now my TBR is so small I actually am able to sort of keep up with the holds as they come in as well as just borrow extra books so I thought I would actually browse and I I, I thought I would really enjoy that because when I was a child and I used a library like I, I solely browsed I didn't even know you could request books back then so I just browsed and I loved it and I, yeah I thought I would I would really enjoy that and I didn't now I will say I had been in the city doing a couple of bits and I sort of felt like I, I wanted to get home and also uh, my local library in Norwich is always kept very well heated which is obviously like good for the community it's a nice warm place to go but it does mean it's not a pleasant place to spend a lot of time especially when you've been shopping so I had like bags of food shopping with me and stuff so yeah I wasn't like um without baggage is what I'm saying so I I have a list on my library app of books that I know my library has that I also want to read and so I was trying to see which ones um, were available in my library compared to like other libraries in Norfolk that I can't get to and yeah quite a lot of them weren't available and I think a lot of that is because in terms of what my library has on the shelves compared to my taste like they're a bit different when I was browsing what I realized is my library has a lot of sort of more popular like easy to read stuff so they have a lot of um, sort of mystery and thriller writers they also have a lot of um, romance and they also have a lot of like I don't know really what I'd call it but stuff like the bakery beside the sea in Cornwall those type of books with like the cute titles cute covers and they had a lot of that and I think the types of books I like reading they maybe only have one or two copies in the whole county and so the likelihood of that book being out and someone else already having it is quite high so when I was browsing I felt like I was browsing like a rubbishy version of my library's catalogue because you know I know they have way more books available than that that are more to my taste but you know they're probably being borrowed so basically what I realised is, is I think I do prefer reserving books online and just going to collect the ones I want because there's loads of books in my library I think I had like a hundred books on my list of books I knew my library had I wanted to read and I really struggled to find many of them so I have eight here and actually a couple of these books weren't on the list because I didn't know the library had them so they were sort of bonus picks but yeah so basically I'm interested if you're a library user if you are more likely to reserve books and like just go in and collect them or are you more likely to go in and browse or do you do a bit of both and do you find that the selection that you browse is different to what you have available online like for the reasons I gave I'm just interested I love hearing people talk about their library and how they use it and all those things and then lastly one other thing I wanted to say about the library before I actually show you the books is that I've had quite a few people comment I have a lot of librarians watch which I love because I love hearing about their library system 
So I've had quite a few people comment saying, if your county doesn't have a book in stock, you can do something called an interlibrary loan, which is where you ask them to get that book sent over from a different county. And I've checked and my library does offer that service, but it costs 12 pounds. Now, bearing in mind that a sort of new paperback is probably eight or nine pounds, like why would I pay 12 pounds to borrow a book and then like not get to keep it? So I'm never gonna do that because it is, it is not a good price, um, but it does have that feature available. I'm sure in other counties in the UK, maybe it's a lot cheaper, but where I live in Norfolk, it isn't. So that was just a, like a response because I've had a lot of people say, oh, why don't you try the interlibrary loan thing? And um, I have, and it, it's very expensive. Oh, and one more thing is that I did a anticipated releases video recently for spring and I requested that my library buy like the majority of those books and they have approved like eight out of the 10 books I requested them buying and the other two they haven't declined yet they just haven't answered yet so um, I'm having really good luck with that and so I really recommend that you find out if your library take requests I do it online but again I think you can just go up to a librarian and ask if they'll order some books for you so yeah it's definitely worth trying. So on to the books I have four novels and four memoirs so like i said i really was craving like a couple of british based books and i have actually requested quite a few now because they just weren't in stock you know someone else was borrowing them but the one i did really want to read that i was really happy to find in the library was english monsters by james scudamore this came out a couple of years ago and it hasn't actually had um that many reviews i don't think it was like super popular but from the moment it came out i was intrigued by it and I picked up, this is the first book I started reading after I got the books from the library yesterday. Uh, I think I'm about 40 pages in and I'm really enjoying this. Um, the premise is we are following a, a young boy in I think the 80s who is being sent to a boarding school in England and is like really horrific there, like some really awful things go on. And he is sort of looking back as an adult and telling the story and it says, Years later, as Max and his friends face down adulthood, a dark secret from their school days is revealed, drawing them together in unforeseen ways. Who knew what and when and who now wants to see justice done? And this has blurbs from Hilary Mantel, Sarah Moss and Evie Wilde. And, you know, they're all writers that I really admire. And Evie Wilde says, I've never read a novel as good and wise on trauma as it moves through the generations. There are moments in it that will stay with me forever. So, yeah, I... I'm really enjoying this. It's really beautifully written. In the opening section, he is spending the summer on his grandparents' farm and he's like super happy and he's just got to the boarding school. So I am feeling quite tense because I think this is supposed to be pretty dark. So I don't know how bad it's going to get. Um, but so far, I think the writing style is beautiful and this is exactly what I wanted in terms of like a British novel. So there is that. And then I have a couple of like American college-based books. I recently have just really been feeling like I want to read sort of boarding school or academia based novels. I know this is like a really big thing on booktube in the last year or so um, and I think lots of fantasy books are coming out with like dark academia vibes. But yeah I think it's a really interesting um, period of people's lives to look at in particular the fact that you know people meet and, and develop this really close relationship because they're living in quite close quarters all that stuff. So this is one I heard Bert from Storytime talk about, I think a couple of years ago now, and I never heard it before, but I thought it sounded really up my street. And that is The Last of Her Kind by Sigrid Nunez. So I'm really rubbish with trying to make it not shiny because of the library cover. So I've just realized this sounds a little bit similar to English Monsters. This is set in the 1960s in New York. And we follow these two young women who meet, they're from really different backgrounds. One is from like a really impoverished background and one is from a really wealthy background. And they develop this really fast, close friendship. But then it says, years after a fight ends their friendship, Anne is convicted of murder. As Georgette struggles to understand what has happened, she is led back to their shared history and to an examination of the revolutionary era in which the two women came of age. So yeah, I love female friendships. I also re recently have realise I really enjoy sort of literary novels that are quite slow focused but have an element of sort of like mystery or a twist which I think both this and English Monsters are going to offer so I might read this one straight after um, and see if there's any sort of um, comparisons of things like that so yeah there is that one and then a super popular book when this came out I just felt like maybe it was going to be a bit too intellectual for me and I felt like I wouldn't enjoy it. And I've heard more and more people talk about it over the years. And um, there's recently been this sort of a follow-on novel come out. And yeah, I just think I'm going to give it a go. And maybe this isn't for me, but you know, 
you can just borrow books from the library and no harm done if you don't like them. And that book is The Idiot by Elif Batterman. So yeah, I think lots of you have probably heard of this book. Um, this is a novel based in academia. I think this follows a few years of this young woman's life and the new novel follows her um, a few years after that. And I think this follows her, she goes to Harvard and she is like really overwhelmed by the pressure. And I think she maybe develops a relationship with um, a man who maybe is a bit older than her, I'm not quite sure. But yeah, I've heard really amazing things about this. I've heard people say that it's like a real and um, propulsive read. So I'm intrigued to give it a go. And if I enjoy it, I can pick up the follow on. And then this next one, completely different. This is one I've put on probably three TBRs and I've never read. Um, I was intending to listen to it on audio because it's not published in the UK. So I didn't think I'd ever find a copy here but then I did. Um, and that is Too Much Lip by Melissa Lukashenko. This author is uh, an Aboriginal Australian writer and I've heard um, a lot of her novels really celebrated, but this one in particular is supposed to be um, really funny and sexy. And uh, It's about an Aboriginal woman who is asked to go back to her homeland because her grandfather is ill. And when she's there, she finds out that this corporation are trying to and pressure her grandmother to sell their ancestral land. And it's about the fight the family put up to resist that. And yeah, I've just heard amazing things about this book and was really surprised to see it. I may still pair this with audio because I'm really bad at accents, like to the point where like I have an accent, but when people are like, oh, like what's in, what are some things that people from Suffolk say accent wise, I'm not very good at like imitating it, even though that's how I talk, I'm really bad at accents. So um, I think a lot of the time it is good for me to listen on audio if there is an accent involved. So I may pair this one. Then on to the memoirs. This first one, I was just browsing a section where they had like a lot of new releases face forward. And I saw this from across the library. And um, I was gonna say ran, I didn't run. I walked very fastly, <laughs> very quickly towards it. Fastly, very quickly towards it because um, it was a book I'd been intending to read. And that is Year of the Tiger, An Activist's Life by Alice Wong. Alice Wong was the editor for Disability Visibility, which I actually started on audio, but realised it was a book I'd rather read physically. And actually don't know if my library have a copy, so I definitely need to check that out. But yeah, this is Alice Wong's own memoir. And this sounds really interesting because it sounds like it's just like a blend of a lot of different things. It says, drawing on a collection of original essays, previously published work, conversations, graphics, photos, art commissioned from disabled and Asian American artists and more, Wong has created a groundbreaking memoir, an impressionistic scrapbook of her life as an Asian American disabled activist, community organiser, media maker and dreamer. And yeah, I just heard really good things about her writing and it just sounds different to anything I've ever read before. And I mean, also I love the cover. So there is that one. And then this next one was one I just saw as I was browsing, was quite surprised to see that my library had because this is one I've had on my list to, to read. I have a list of all the memoirs I'd like to read, um, all the ones I'm aware of anyway, and it has about 100 memoirs on it, so yeah. But I'm slowly chipping away through them, and this is one that's been on the list for a couple of years, and that is Places I've Taken My Body by Molly McCulley Brown. You can't really see this cover very well, it's, it's very white. I love that title. Um, this is supposed to be a, a memoir that examines, I think, what trauma does to a body and what it's like um, living with that trauma um, and living with a body that I think um, Molly McCulley Brown deals with uh, chronic pain because of the trauma she's been through. And um, I've heard this is really beautifully written, incredibly emotional. I think this is gonna be quite a difficult read, um, but it's quite a short read as well. So yeah, I am very much um, interested in um, reading about these types of stories. It says on the back, there's an excerpt, and it says um, she had to relearn to walk four times. Um, so yeah, I think she's had a, a really interesting and a, a difficult experience with the effects of trauma on her body. And like I said, I'm really interested in that and heard great things about this one. The next one I saw in a bookshop recently and had, hadn't heard of it and thought it looked beautiful from across the room and then I read the blurb and thought it sounded really interesting when I checked my library had a copy so I of course requested it and it's just come in and that is a girlhood a letter to my transgender daughter by Carolyn Hayes look at that amazing cover I mean any book that's called girlhood is going to draw me in this is a memoir from the perspective of I think a fairly famous author but this name is a pseudonym because she wants to hide her, her family and her daughter's identity and this is about um, what 
it was like for the family um, to experience her daughter coming out as trans and the um, sort of awful situation they had to deal with because of the way society reacted to that. I think some people reported them to social services because they said it was like harmful to their daughter to basically you know, lovingly accept that she was a trans girl. And so, yeah, they were investigated by social services. And it's about those experiences. And yeah, I thought it sounded really interesting. Love the title, love the cover. So just had to read this one. And then this last one I picked up from the American section of my library. We have a section um, where we have um, American publications. And I always like to have a browse because I, I read a lot of books that are only published in the US. And I saw this book, which I'd seen Rincey from Rincey Reads review a few weeks back now um, and give a really positive review to. And that is Salito by Javier Samora. So this is his story of a 3000 mile odyssey from his small town in El Salvador when he was nine years old to reunite with his mother in the US um, and a father who he hadn't seen in many years. And um, yeah, sort of what that experience was like for such a young child to make that journey alone. I think he um, sort of um, paired up with uh, another family um, and did the journey with them. And it's about that experience. Um, yeah, what it was like for a child to, to have that experience. This has got glowing reviews all over it. And this is a story I haven't really read much about from a sort of non-fiction perspective. And so, yeah, when I heard Rinsey talk about this one, I was like, that's one I definitely need to read. And yeah, I was, was very surprised, but happy to see that my library had a copy. So there is that. So those are all the books I recently borrowed. I'll probably do fairly regular library book hauls from now on because I hope to, yeah, just, just read through these books and, and then return them quickly and borrow more and just sort of... When I actually show you books now, you will hear me talk about them in the next month or so because either I will read them and enjoy them or I will, you know, hopefully not, but I may DNF them. And I do talk about my DNFs over on my Patreon, which is always linked down below. But yeah, I'm just really excited that I'm not sort of showing you a stack of books that I may talk about, but we may have to wait five years. I'm showing you a stack of books that's almost like an upcoming TBR. Um, I just feel really happy about that. Um, I'm so glad I've got to this point. It feels silly to be so happy about it, but I genuinely feel like over the moon. So yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching. Do let me know if you've read any of those books, um, if you have any thoughts on them. Also, if you have any recommendations for like the themes I mentioned that you think um, books I might be interested in. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.